Oké. Okay. Goed. Ik ben dus Hendrik Smit. Hendrik lost op. You can argue that everyone has some blind spot. If you're color blind or completely blind, you cannot imagine free color vision. Dyslexics often find a way to cope with their blind spot so well that nobody notices. Hello. You could argue that there are also blind spots for empathy. And a lot of this world's problems arise from lack of empathy. In this episode, I will show you two types of empathy. First, emotional empathy, now called the only type. And I introduce rational empathy as a second type. Uh, better understanding these two types will allow you to better understand the people around you and how they roll. Around the turn of the century, there was a website called Bonsai Kitten, dedicated to an old tradition of keeping house pets in glass containers, complete with photos, instructions and a guest book that obviously displayed furious reactions by animal lovers. Even the FBI investigated this animal cruelty. The only thing was, it was all made up. All it took was a few suggestive photos and a story to fill in the blanks and people fell for it. Hook, line and sinker. Now this is fairly innocent in comparison to what happened a few years earlier. The story and tears of a nurse from Kuwait initiated the first Gulf War. The stories of the atrocities made the population willing to go to war. The thing was that in reality this crying nurse was the daughter of the ambassador of Kuwait, well instructed by the infamous PR agency Hill and Knowlton. Now, how did you do? Did you spot that these were fake stories? How's your own empathy? We now continue with the beef of the episode, starting with the most known type of empathy. Emotional empathy so far has been considered the only type of empathy, and it's the kind that psychopaths are lacking in. However, Psychopaths are often very skillful negotiators because they understand people's rational considerations. So in that sense they do have empathy. Their blind spot is in spotting people's emotions. Often intelligent, they manage to read people's emotion and camouflage their deficiency with a semblance of care and warmth. There are people with a blind spot for rational considerations. They are not too much concerned with how questions and they cannot understand people's business considerations, making them very poor negotiators and debaters. These people are loaded with feelings. We will get to know them. Feelings are their driving factor. These people are very concerned with the fate of others, especially the weak. They feel compelled to save the world. Gently show them something of injustice and overcome with feeling they will draw their wallet or demand action or better policy. Their sensitive nature also shows itself in flight behavior. Behind the veil of the positive, they are actually uh, afraid to confront their worst feelings. They lack the courage. And as a result, a lot of problems are not solved or may even worsen. The conviction seems to be that if you do things a certain way, then everything will come to a good end. And this is why their meetings are endless and fruitless. Everyone is invited to share their feelings and nothing is accomplished. Now, it's fine to focus on atmosphere if you're throwing a party, but for establishing policies, it is killing. After all, you have to ask the how question. 
And during these meetings, some of the participants will be highly frustrated with the lack of progress, but they're not sensitive enough to pick up on those feelings. In the infamous book Atlas Shrugged, these people are called the mystics of the muscle. Mystics, because they don't ask how things are made possible, relying on some form of magic to achieve their goals. The muscle refers to the fact that they like to use force to get their way with words like forbidden, mandatory, tax and boycott. They abuse these brute instruments because their plans are irrational and they are incapable of defending them to others. No, I can't imagine anyone doing a thing like that. That's the response that you get when you confront these people with what psychopaths actually do. It's beyond their imagination and they can emotionally not cope, so they won't and they leave others to fend for themselves. Psychopaths, on the other hand, did learn what makes these people tick. They manipulate, stir up emotions and mobilize fears for their own purpose. Just take a look at the many charities, wolves in sheep's clothes that rake in millions, yet fail at solving problems or even make matters worse. But as said, these sensitive people won't hear anything of it. They're much too attached to their pleasant feelings and nobody's going to take that away. Money is abstract to these people, although they've learned it has its purpose. Precisely because it is so meaningless, in sharp contrast to their noble causes, they redistribute money with great ease taxes and subsidies. Consequently, these plans draw life from productive elements in society, like parasites. These people define themselves by their struggles against injustices and they feel quite well in this dependent relationship. They scan their world for things to fight. What they represent is outside of themselves, whereas the psychopath represents only himself. In the end, they stand for nothing, which is illustrated by the fact that they are never accountable, and by their negative definitions of what they want. They can tell you exactly what they are against, but much less what they are in favor of. Now, this was a short introduction into rational empathy and the people who have a blind spot in that area, which we may call sociomanics. If you have a better word, let me know. These people are the opposite of psychopaths who are lacking in emotional empathy. Now, from better understanding one another, we can make this world a better place doesn't want that. So I'd like to invite you to think about your own empathy, where do you stand, and how about the people around you? Can you spot people with certain traits that match the profiles that I just described? Let me know. I welcome comments and feedback, so you can put that below the clip. And if you liked it, please push that button. In any case, thanks for watching.